Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Getting on. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. We, um, I guess you could say we've technically wanted to talk to you since the beginning of um, our channel ever. You could, I don't know if you know this, you... I know this because I've been in I've been in touch with uh, uh, with the gentleman uh, in India that mm -hmm. has uh, uh, mailed me regarding this and very diligently and has been very patient and mm -hmm. uh, I I love what you do and I have said yes so he has just been waiting for me to confirm a date and I I owe you an apology but it's not because oh, I've no. been lax I've just been hectic and uh, now here we are. No, no, no. Thank you. I uh, understand all that. It's just you might you could actually take credit for starting our channel. The first thing we ever reacted to was the Gully Boy trailer, which is what got us oh, into cool. Indian cinema. Uh, yes, and that yes, yes, that, that, subse that. Yes. that subsequently we that was the first film we had ever seen in theaters for an Indian cinema uh, ever. And now we've seen uh, 400 plus uh, and talked to so many brilliant people. We wanted to talk to you for so long. So thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank it's a, a big exciting. pleasure for thank us. Uh, but starting with um, the, the Archies, I know you're, you were a big fan as a kid, um, mm -hmm. but adapting a very American uh, comic, obviously that has a worldwide audience. What were some of the challenges in adapting such an American um comic into and also indiafying it for lack of a better word yeah so i think i think uh yeah there were there were a bunch of challenges yeah. uh, one was uh how do we take it and how do we make it ours uh and still retain the essence of what the comic was and what the comic meant to us as kids because we were reading it in the early 80s this was like a pre-liberalized pre-globalized india uh you didn't have access to anything really that came from the outside so we had enid blyton we had archie comics you know that was our portal to the west and uh, uh we were like 8 10 12 when we were reading it like in our and then our tweens so it meant the world it was also the only comic with teenagers so you aspired to have that life when you grew up you know um in, in a sense so so for pe it's so it was challenging because people like me wanted that nostalgia and they want to come in to watch a movie and they want that feeling that was they had as kids you know, go down memory lane. And at the same time, uh, it needed to be relevant to Gen Z that doesn't know anything about Archie Comics in mm -hmm. India. It needed to have that essence of that, the Western essence, but it needed to be rooted in India. Uh, so there were a bunch of um, challenges. Mm -hmm. And what we did was uh, we, uh, we, we anglified it more than Americanized mm -hmm. it. Uh, because uh, there is a community in India called the Anglo-Indian community and that a lot of them have stayed back uh, uh, after uh, post-independence. Uh, uh, you know, they were born, they set their roots in before uh, pre-independence. And when uh, that happened, a lot of people migrated to England, a lot of people migrated to Australia. But there were there were there was a huge uh, amount that wanted to stay back in India because that was their country. And that's where they were born and that's the country they loved. So they stayed back and they were the, the Anglo-Indians. Uh, and uh, we uh, put the the story in, in into that community and it kind of gelled really well. Uh, A, because we could retain the names, uh, uh, Archie Andrews, Veronica Lodge, Reggie Mantle, because that had to have a Christian base. So uh, we could retain those names and the other opportunity was Goa, but we decided to go with the Anglos because they hadn't been seen on screen as much. Uh, they, um, uh, they were they were the, the communities were based in hill stations as well, which suited our story uh, fine. And there were places like Makalski Ganj and Landor that have this kind of architecture and these communities living there. So it it, it fit in well. They have a robust food culture. They love music. Uh, you know, they were uh, the fashion was similar. Uh, so it just gelled. Was the, were the challenges not just obviously in the writing? but what kind of challenges did you face with your production design and art direction in that regard? I would imagine there were a few. Yes, uh, we, uh, I mean, we, 
the fact that we based it in the hills made mm -hmm. it seem slightly simpler because you didn't have to deal with the kind of development an urban city has right now. So that when you when you're shooting a film like say in Bombay, in Mumbai, or in Calcutta, where uh, there is a huge Anglo Indian community, but the development is so much that to make it uh, a 1960s film, you're going to have to spend a lot more money. So right. just taking it and transporting it to Uti uh, uh, saved uh, saved us some of that, and mm -hmm. it's just prettier. If you read an Archie comic, it's just green. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of greenery in an Archie comic <laughs> that lent itself to the story and to the design of it. Uh, I work with Suzanne Meranji and she's she's an absolute genius. And so she took she took the, the comic, but more than comic book, we went with the storybook aesthetic. So the reality mm -hmm. is dreamy and it was like a dream that was slightly real, you know? And we mm -hmm. went with that. So we, we had the Anglo-Indian community, we had old Indian hill stations and we had storybook. These were our mixture and we used a lot of 50s. Uh, references uh, uh, as opposed to 60s because in India like I said pre-liberalized India by the time something happened by the time it trickled down to India there was a delay it wasn't like today where you have access to everything uh, right. so we were still in the late 50s when it was 1964 so right. yeah we went with that so a lot has been made about your cast in this film my my question is more um We've seen your entire filmography thus far. Um, you're one of the actually few actors of India that we've actually seen their entire filmography. Um, you've worked with so many brilliant actors, so many veteran actors. Yeah, I've been very Now lucky. going with a bunch of newcomers, um, young newcomers at that. So was that nerve wracking as a director? Uh, and I know you've praised them, obviously, with their performances and you're excited about them. Was it nerve wracking, though, starting out with non-veteran actors? I mean, I did have uh, it did cross my mind that is this going to be harder work? And it mm -hmm. did cross my mind, like, how am I going to do this? Because I'm so used to a pace on set. And I'm yeah. so used to actors that just come in, like, deliver. And mm -hmm. how's this going to work out? I did, did feel that. But mm -hmm. uh, I just had to. The only thing that was different was the prep. Uh, I think there was just an extended prep uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we put them into, uh, they did three acting workshops, different workshops for different reasons. One of them was with me, uh, the reading of the scenes and the other two with two other uh, uh, theater-based actors that uh, theater-based uh, coaches that actually train actors and work with actors. Uh, they did a, a lot of opening up stuff because it's a musical you need to sing and to believe that someone is singing they need to sing uh when we're shooting and it, it can be very intimidating mm -hmm. to do that in front of 200 people with a camera in your face <laughs> so they went into singing classes so they got used to hearing their voice uh i mean archie had to learn to play the guitar uh uh Mihir, who plays jagan had to learn to play the drums the girls had to learn to skate uh they had they, they had they had an entire boot camp plan for them and what we did which i think really served us well was we took them through the technical aspects of acting so the a cinematographer did a full workshop with uh, the kids telling them what it, it, the technical aspects of acting so it's it, oh, wow. it's you have to hit the light you know, you right. have to catch the light, you have to hit your mark, you have to know how to be when you are giving a shoulder, when the camera is behind your shoulder and an actor is in front of you, how much can you move, uh, what is a wide, what is a tight, uh, so nice. how much you emote, how much, so by the time they came to say, how do you walk over a track? Right. <laughs> yeah, how do you cross a track? <laughs> so, you know, these kind of things we don't think about, but when you come onto a set, they can intimidate you. You know, oh, you didn't hit your mark. You didn't hit your mark. That can throw a young actor off. They were so clued in. Then we had continuity. We had the script supervisor come in, do a workshop on continuity. What did <sighs> it mean? We had somebody come in and tell us set protocol, the first AD. This is your call sheet. This is what's going to happen. This is where you go first. This is what it means to do this. This is a five minute warning. This is what. So by the time they came to set, they were stallions. They were just, they are pros. They're going to, they're going to, yeah, they're going to go anywhere. That they're just completely trained. That's awesome. That's, that is, that is such a huge gift that you gave to them and in all sincerity. I gave it to us because, yeah, to, to all of you. Yes. Yeah, because you realize that, you know, you get onto set and now it's the same. Now it's yes. now, now you're working with an actor in the same manner that you're used to. Uh, and they are completely, uh, they, they, they felt secure. 
you know they felt they knew what they had to do uh they were they were very clued in they understood uh, the crew really well and i think it served everybody really well and now i'm spoiled because they came in like fully professional without any baggage it right. was also their first time so the enthusiasm right. the excitement the wonder uh mm -hmm. you know and the, 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 it, there was no stress there was no uh date issues this issue nothing they were just yeah. there they were available and i think that kind of spoiled me a little it may yeah it may have but it, it <laughs> yeah. shows just in the trailers that we've seen that's one of the things that was impressive to to, to Corbin and I was every one of them seemed particularly grounded, particularly still when they needed to be. And I bet when we watched the full thing, I bet you also got a level of camaraderie and fellowship with each other as a cast with all of that training they went through together. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. That was the that was the biggest thing because they spent so much time together. They yeah. actually came out a gang, you know. Yeah. And they are a gang, and uh, it, it it it's it's lovely to see because they were we were also on location. That's another thing that when you shoot on yeah. location and nobody's going back home, you just end up with each other. And uh, we spent four months uh, together, and uh, it, it it shows in the film, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, today is actually um, Augusta's birthday. At 12 so we're all going oh. out yeah yeah, yeah. that's great yeah. um so one of the staples that i've found in most of your films is outside of just being high quality and um uh, usually it's there's like uh, powerfulness behind it but there's usually a overwhelming sense of happiness especially at the end like you'd I feel like you like to make people happy. Um, why? And is that like a conscious decision <laughs> while you're writing? <laughs> I I don't know. You know, I mean, I do have a, a I, I don't, I think the only film I've done, um, the two films I've done as of now that are not overtly happy at the end were yeah. my short films, which yes. is Last mm -hmm. Stories and Ghost Stories. Yes, uh, right. But I think... Um, I, I don't know what it is. I think different cultures go to the cinema for different reasons. I think, uh, uh, and I think in India, people like being lifted. I mm -hmm. think people like, uh, 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 they, they like to know that life will work out. You know, uh, they like a sense of celebration, uh, a celebration of the human spirit. I think they react to that really well. And I grew up in India watching that cinema. So it's very important for me. Be it's not to say that films that are not don't have happy endings or films that are not are not, uh, are, are not things I watch. Uh, some of my favorite films are films that are like uh, uh, that are real mirror to society and uh, and 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 dismal. But at the same time, they stay with you and um, and they give you a side of humanity you don't want to face, but you do face, you know? So I love that as well, but I don't gravitate towards that when I'm writing somehow. Uh, I, I, um, uh, I like that feeling that I like the high, I like the, uh, the larger than life high that, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're in a theater and you're watching something bigger than you and you come out elated. I like that feeling. Uh, there's something to it, you know, it, it, it's, ha and I feel like I have a huge platform uh, as a filmmaker and uh, I am on some level putting out consciousness into the world. And I, uh, I, I want it to be positive. I, I just, I don't know. It's just a choice. It just happens. You well, know? It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, did you, we noticed in the trailer, there were some similarities, not copies. It's a compliment. There's similarities in the trailer to the same feelings that we have gotten in particular things in cinema, like Grease, uh, Hairspray, uh, even High School Musical. Were any of those things in your mind conceptually yeah. through the process? And did you yeah, give yeah, any yeah. of that to the cast to research? Yes, uh, Grease for sure. I mean, I grew up yeah. in Grease and uh, Hairspray. Yeah. And right. I grew up on the older musicals, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not high school musical. That was way after my time. But yes, Greece for sure. And I think yeah. uh, uh, Johnny Nogarelli, it was a reference for uh, the regimental character with mm -hmm. his uh, leather jacket, the T-Birds and uh, Johnny Nogarelli especially. Definitely. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, the, the, uh, the 50s, uh, the men here, the boys here used to use a uh, brill cream, but we right. couldn't 
Uh, yeah, we couldn't get the permission to use that name. So uh, uh, as a as a hat tip to Greece, I I, I put Greece on the can. Uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So definitely, those films were a huge part of my growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're, let's say, working maybe not as a writer and director, um, or maybe when you're doing one, what hat do you find harder to take off? If you're not doing that exact one, the writer or the director hat? Uh, I feel, um, uh, you know, when you're, it, it, they have such different processes, like the writing process you're, it, it is very uh, insular and it's, uh, uh, you're alone and it, it's a quiet process and it's on your time and your turf. And, you know, I work with Rima Kakti and I worked with Aisha Divitri. I worked with two writers on this, but it was a very, um, uh, it's just two, three people, and then you write alone, you know, when you write. But when you're directing, it's it's the circus, you know, there are yeah. like 200 people on set, everyone's in charge of something, you're answering questions all day, and both are very addictive processes, you know. Uh, I, I can't do, I, I don't, if I had to pick, some, it would be very tough for me to pick one. But when I'm going to direct a film, then I think the director hat sometimes also comes on when I'm writing, like, because you start seeing it a little visually. You know, uh, so I think the director hat maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are there any things we can look for in the production design and art direction similarly to? I understand in Belly Boy, you made a very conscious decision to not use blues. Right. Are there any things like that without spoiling anything? Are there some things that we can notice that aren't evident, like we've already talked about? Some things in production design that are very specific you want us to pay attention to? Uh, no, but I think uh, what you'll get a sense uh, of is um, uh, an old style a camera, uh, like the, uh, the, a very classic style of filmmaking. Uh, I think there are a lot of full frames uh, mm. in this film. Uh, we've yeah, that was my question, was framing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there are a lot of yeah. full frames. There's a lot of wide lensing in that way, uh, which I think harks back to films of that era. You know, the mm. camera slowly the camera moves when it needs to move uh there are there are, there are a lot of uh white it's it's like very classically shot in that sense uh mm -hmm. i think you'll get a sense of that i uh also did use uh uh, uh the comic book uh as a visual reference because a lot of the archie comics start with full frame the characters are full frame walking or they're full framed in a thing and uh, i don't know if you're familiar with uh, an american uh, artist called norman rockwell uh, yes. He, yeah, he was a huge uh, uh, reference point uh, 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 for the framing of it because he was a cartoonist, and then mm -hmm. his cartoons. I mean, he just he then he, they became art, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah. So that those were reference points. We had a very strict palette because uh, I used the same production designer that I had in Gully Boy, so we okay. had a very strict palette, and uh, a lot of it was a 1950s palette with certain pops of color, and yeah. we didn't uh, we didn't. Um, we didn't shift from that. Uh, and uh, what else can you notice? I think um, I think it's very idyllic. I think it's a storybook. Yeah. I think yeah. if you look at it as a storybook, uh, it's an immersive uh, experience because you'll think that you're in a slightly dreamy version of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. On... Um... This is on on a different topic of another film of yours. Uh, we had just in October watched um, Ghost Stories, yours, uh, Kieran Johar's, uh, and Anya Rugg's, um anthologies. We'd seen the other ones as well, and it's clearly evident that there's talented writers and directors in India that can do really good pure horror. Why don't you think that genre is explored uh, that much in India, though? I, I don't know why, because we've done some amazing uh, suspense thrillers, certain mm -hmm. types of horrors. And I mean, we love ghost stories. Yeah. Like, I mean, we grew up on ghost stories. We have a lot of folklore. We have a lot of, go everyone has a ghost story. You know, mm -hmm. every city, every state has their own story. So I don't know why they haven't converted. There have been, at least in the Hindi film industry, while I was growing up, certain ghost stories that became cult films uh, and uh, um, uh, films that you stayed by. I mean, Rima and me had worked on one, uh, which is was a suspense thriller, but I mean, it was all slash ghost story, which was Talash. Uh, if mm -hmm. you watch it, it's called Talash. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, and uh, but you're right; we should have more because uh, we like them. Yeah. Well, 
one of the things as we we wrap up our time with you, and again, thank you. We have long wanted to 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 connect with you. Uh, as, 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 as Corbin said at the very beginning, uh, you're not only responsible very much so for the channel by reason of Gully Boy, but there's two deeply impacting things for me personally because of because of Gully Boy. One of them is my wife Indrani from Fukata saw the Gully Boy reaction. And then she DM'd me on Instagram. And long story short, we're now married and she's here. And that was because of the channel. Oh my God. <laughs> Matchmaker. Yes. Matchmaker Zoya. And because yeah. he made Gully Boy. And I don't I don't know if you've ever seen that. Oh my God. Me. Oh my God. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes, that's because of your film. Oh. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. That's the best thing ever. Um. But maybe all kinds of things yes you absolutely right yeah um as I, as we end this here i want to end it with some uh rapid fire questions like we're um a different okay. show um so just answer these to the best of your ability uh first and foremost coffee or chai coffee mm. uh do you do you do you drink at all yes okay favorite alcoholic beverage oh uh, i like wine i like red wine if if there were to be another anthology made from Bombay Talkies, Love Stories, and Ghost Stories, what would be one of the next themes you might explore? Uh, I think I, I think love. I've never made a love story. I would like to make a love story. I've never done it. Never made a pure love story? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite classic Indian film? Uh, I think I would say Guru Dutt's or Satyajit Trays. Mm. Any specific I mean, one? There, there's no one uh, specific one. I mean, I would take the Apu Trilogy yes. or I would take uh, Guru Dutt's Kagas Ke Pool, Piyasa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a favorite classic Hollywood film? Godfather. Mm. Nice. I mean, if I, I, if I have to go back, then I would say... Uh, I mean, there's so many, yes. but Godfather was the first thing that popped to mind. So I'll stick with that. Yes. What annoys you? Uh, what annoys me? Uh, I think people, um, uh, I think people being late annoys me. I, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, not being punctual, that annoys me. And I think uh, people that don't really um, give their job their best, that annoys me. Mm. What's some of the worst advice someone ever gave you? That I should, uh, uh, I, I, you know, because this is what's working now and that's what I should do. Oh. You that's know, good. these, you know, that's like good. right now, this is working and this is the zeitgeist and that's what you should make. That's mm. not good advice. Mm. Favorite Archie character growing up? They kept changing by the mm. day. I mean, I had a thing, but I think uh, maybe I'd pick Veronica. Mm. Nice. And what, um, why do you make movies? I don't know. I can't do anything else. <laughs> I, have no <laughs> I have no other skills. <laughs> so this is it. Uh, I love movies. I think I make them because I'm an audience and uh, I just haven't ever wanted to do anything else. So if today I had to shift career, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> that's absolutely i i want i don't believe that at all but uh also thank you so much for thank uh you. sitting thank down you. with us we, we've wanted to talk to you like i said for for a yes, long long I long know. long time uh we talked to a lot of your friends as well on your and and uh yeah. Vishal and, and, and a bunch of these different people um and so we, we we're so happy to finally get to talk to you we're so excited Where for, we're in los angeles Oh, you're in Los Angeles. So if there's a screening in Los Angeles, I'm going to get someone to get in touch with you. So you oh, can please. go watch the film. Yeah. Love that. Oh, it, the yeah. theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Otherwise, we, we should we should do one of these after you've seen the film. Absolutely. Yes, we would love to. That absolutely. would be good. Yeah, we have a lot of other questions we'd love to ask. <laughs> yes. Okay. We, we, okay. we have a whole list, but uh, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We are excited for your entire filmography we love but we are excited for everything you have coming up you're one of our favorite directors thank in the thank world you. uh and thank, thank you for you. sitting down rick would you like to say something real quick yeah i just concur with all of that if you've seen anything we've said about you you have repeatedly proven that you are an extraordinary and i use that word specifically you're an extraordinary 
director and writer. Ooh. And there isn't anybody else in the industry. And I don't mean that just in India. I mean, just the entertainment industry globally. There's no one else that when we see your name is attached, whether you're writing or directing, that excites us more than you. So oh, thank uh, you. We, we, thank yeah, you. we really, really love your work. Thank you. Okay.